jam! Hello everyone and welcome to the Mana Pool. Look, it's an actual Mana Pool episode. This is episode 639 of the Mana Pool. And... Bleh. I I am exhausted. If at any point I doze off during this episode, I apologize for nothing. <laughs> I have spent the last... Well, not the last, but I spent about six hours helping Scott move stuff. Like heavy furniture and whatnot. So I am wiped out. So yeah. Wiped out? I'm Brian. I'm uh I'm uh the lead rambler and tangent master of the group. I am also tired, but I kind of feel these days like that's almost a perpetual state of being. Yeah. I am still ready for the holidays. I really am. And then there's Mike. Who's really bad at picking up cues at when to go? Sorry, <laughs> kind of couldn't tell that you were. It didn't sound like a big pause. I couldn't tell that you were done. Um, I'm Mike. I'm the rules guy in the game more guy. I'm here. Whatever. <laughs> and I'm Zerk, the self-proclaimed greenest man alive and moral compass of the group. And apparently, I am the more enthusiastic person tonight. Apparently. Stop Wait, making us all look bad, Dirk. Am. <clears throat> Dirk's showing off by not being comatose. Go tell the principal. <laughs> Lord. By the way, I'm chewing. Lord, I, I don't know if I actually said that earlier. No, I think you just said you were wiped out. But I'm pretty sure if anyone uh, is listening, they probably know that at this point. Probably. But, yeah, hello. So, I forgot. But, yeah, yeah. So, like All I right, said, good if, night, I, everybody. if I doze off, I apologize. Someone, like, text me. I'll put the phone, like, in my crotch or something. So that when it goes, oh, hey, who? Uh, right. Draconic in the chat points out that it's strange that Dirk is the only one of us that doesn't sound tired. Does that mean Dirk is gonna ha is like gonna stay on after everybody else does their final thoughts, and Dirk will just carry out the show? <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with that. I hope not. Dirk, Dirk yeah, you can have all the patrons. Yeah, all the patrons yeah. and stuff, and I'll have a nap. Yeah. So uh, yes, Chewy, it, that's, Chewy. Yeah. It's it's eight in the. It's almost nine in the evening. I don't think that qualifies as a nap anymore. I think that's just Betty bye. I mean, for me, it's a nap because I usually wouldn't be sleeping for another four or five hours. That's true. For me, it's Betty bye. So anyway, uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. let's let's get to it. So this week we are going to do a mythic conscription. That is where we go back to sets before the mythic rarity was even a thing because yes, children ask your parents mythic inscription. Wasn't always or mythic inscription. Mythic rarity was not always a thing. In fact, when and it first was popped mythic up, inscription. <laughs> it's true. Uh, when the, uh, the mythic, uh, rarity first popped up, it was the end of magic. <laughs> that time. Yeah. There were a lot of ends of magic back then. If you listen to the doomsayers, and yeah. Look, even I have uh, stopped paying any attention to magic at all, and it still refuses to die. It's true. Is it but undead at this point? May no, because it hasn't died in the first place. I think you have to die to become undead. I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure. Look, I've I've read Anne Rice, and when when you become a vampire, you have to die, and then you 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 vampire. That's true. Ooh, can I be Brad Pitt? You can be Tom Cruise. Uh, actually, sure. That sounds good. Cause in the, the the second book, apparently he becomes a rock star. So hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds awesome. And you can sit around and mope about how awful your life is for two hundred years. <laughs> but I love the color blue. <laughs> but yeah, so the the set we're looking at this time, we did Odyssey in the last set or the last time. So now it's time for Torment. And Torment Thought. was the uh, 
Torment was the first time they did something weird. Mike, you want to explain what they did that was weird with Torment? Yeah, so for story reasons, and I guess just to be weird, um, Torment was a set that instead of having all the colors balanced against each other, it was heavily weighted towards one color at the expense of others. Um, you know, it's about a really dark and touchy time in the story, and the set is heavily weighted towards black. Um, blue and red, the ally colors, have about the same number of cards as they would in a normal small set like this. Remember, this is also back when they used to do large, small, small for uh, blocks. Yeah. But the expand, but to expand black, they reduced the number of cards in white and green. Um, they were more on the ropes. And also, as part of the story, when the good guys won in the end, spoilers, um, <laughs> in judgment, the balance swung back the other way. White and green got pumped up, and black was greatly reduced in the following set, Judgment. But yeah, you can even see it in the the rares we're about to look at. Um, black has 12 rares in the set. Blue and red have 9 each, but white and green only have 7 each. Yeah. I noticed that. So yeah, that's that's what what they did with torment, and it was a really neat idea, I guess. Mm -hmm. It was. As someone like I wasn't playing yet when this set came out, so like I never did any drafts or anything with it. But it was a this and judgment were sets that were still available for sale when I started, which was around onslaught. So. Started again, I guess, which is around Onslaught. So we bought a lot of packs of these because go to the crack house and be like, all right, give me some Onslaught and some Torment and some Judgment. Thank you. Yep, sounds about right. I yeah. got started at for the very first time uh, around the same time as Chewie coming back to it. And so yeah, it was it was the new thing. I remember that being a thing, and invasion blocks still being fairly popular. Um, I bought my my first pre constructed deck was from Apocalypse, but a lot of my first boosters were from Torment. And also, I started reading because I didn't know the game too well. I started reading like Inquest magazine, and they had power ratings for a lot of the stuff from Torment. So I was really surprised when I'm like basking root wall was like named one of the most powerful cards in the set. And I'm like, wow, I have like four copies of that already because it's like a common or something. Okay. I must have great luck. And then later I'm like, Oh, I mean, it's good, but in the world of psychotog, maybe not the best. Yeah. Stupid psychotog ruining everything for everybody. The end of but Matt, Ryan, you can discard basking root wall at the psychotog and cast it for free. I can. And then I'll have a 1-1 one, one that I can pump. <laughs> yeah! And I can return, it to my, return it to my hand with upheaval. <sighs> yes. Those are things I can do, Mike. So I have a quick <laughs> thought before we really get into... Uh, before we get into the cards themselves, Magic is... How old now? Next year, it'll be 30, right? Because we're going back to Dominaria, and they said, oh, it's the 30th anniversary, right? Oh, really? Well, no. I, was saying, I thought it came out in 93. Yeah, it did come out in 93. Hmm. Okay, so it'll be 29 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Set names. You notice we've been talking about Onslaught, Judgment, Torment, Odyssey, Mirage... Those all are yeah. one. Other than a set name, where the name is the name of the plane, what is the last one word set we've had? And I have not researched this. I'm just. I don't 
don't know. Is Let's Amon go Ket a one word set name? But that's the place. Yeah, oh, dang it. Um... <laughs> okay, here we go. Conspiracy was 2014. Battle was Bond was 2018. That's interesting, though. Those are like meant to be draft sets. They weren't standard yeah. sets. Yeah, th- those are supplemental. I mean, they're still so for, sets. For standard legal stuff, let's see here. I can't find... This is all supplementary crap. Okay, here we go. Okay. Neon... Kamigawa Nia and Dynasty, no. The Two Innistrads, no. D&D, no. Strixhaven, no. Kaldheim, no. Zendikar Rising, no, no. Theros, Throne of Eldraine, War of the Spark, Dominaria is a plane, Ixalan's a plane... Amonkhet's a plane. Kaladesh is a plane. Theros is a plane. Gatecrash was the last Gatecrash. standard legal set that was one word that was not the name of the plane. There we go. And that was 2013. That was, uh... Right. So, just... Now, I realize... As much as they say, you know, there's infinite possibility with magic cards and they can keep coming up with new stuff. You know, using a lot of these descriptor words after a while, like maybe you have a a, 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 a set named Strife and you have another one named Torment and one named Suffering. And after a while, you're like, wait, which which one was it that's an adjective for pain? <laughs> so I get I get that it's tricky, but some I was I was looking at the cards of torment, and I'm like, they don't name sets like they do, like they did. And I'm like, oh, probably because they can't. And I, honest, I'm not complaining about it. it's 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 different. I'm not saying one is better than the other. When I want to remember which one was set on Amonkhet, I can be like, oh yeah, <laughs> Amonkhet. So so, going so back I, to again, Gate crash. Okay, from there we've had some sets that are. That have neat names. Born of the Gods, Journey into Nyx, Fate Reforged. Yeah. Uh, Oath of the Gatewatch, Eldritch Moon, which I noticed they didn't feel the need to name it Innistrad, Eldritch Moon. I don't know why Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow are Innistrad. Midnight Hunt they're, and Innistrad, they're, Crimson they're, Vow. Yeah. Because they're both part of the double feature thing where they're, they're both separate sets, but you could tell right from the get-go... I think it's to emphasize the Innistrad part for marketing purposes. Yeah, probably. Like, since we stopped having, like, blocks, like, okay, we've got Amonkhet and then Hour of Devastation. That's cool. Ixalan and then Rivals of Ixalan. Okay, that's less cool. But since then, War of the Spark is the only name that's been remotely interesting. Like, Guilds of Ravnica. Oh, Ravnica Allegiance. Oh, War of the Spark. Who? And then Throne of Eldraine, Theros Beyond Death, Ikoria, Lair of Behemoth, Zendikar Rising, called it. Like, they're all places. Even Strixhaven yeah. is the name of the, uh, is the school, right? That's not the name of the plane, right? Right. It's the school. Yeah. It's the school. The plane is the... I wonder if it's because they move from setting to setting with every set now. I, I think so it is. Like so, they have they feel like they have to give it the name of the place, so you know where you are. So you know where you are, yeah. Whereas originally, it was almost not all, but almost all Dominaria. You would have some like uh, Mercadia masks that was Mercadia, or the whole Urza saga took place on a multitude of planes. Although again, centrally Dominaria, yeah. Dominaria. Even Mass Art Block happened on different planes. Mercadian Mass was on Mercadia, Nemesis was on Wrath, and then Prophecy was back on Dominaria. Yeah. Yeah, but, but ever lot, since we but, started but, doing, like, different places, like, Mirrodin was where it started, and then it was Mirrodin, and then two names, and then the Kamigawa ones were something of Kamigawa for each one, and Ravnica was Ravnica, and then two somethings. Yeah. So, but as we expand, it's a, it's kind of important to Kind of clue people into, hey, this is where this is happening. Yeah, so, yeah. That was, so, that's a good again, point. And hey, I have those every have now and then. Blocks anymore? Like you said, we can't just like with War of the Spark. That was sort of like the big wrap up to what was essentially a block. Yeah, yeah. basically, it was. 
so we got a cool name. And after that, we don't get cool names anymore. We get place name colon thing. <laughs> Except for call time, which was just call time because screw you. That's why. <laughs> I love I love colon thing. I'm holding out for kidneys though. So. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Boo this man. Boo this man. <laughs> but that's probably enough of a lead in. Yeah, that's, so, that was a neat little tangent there. I like it. I'm I'm happy to help. So, mythic conscription. As we've said, we go through the rares and try to figure out which ones would have been printed at the time as mythic. And we generally have some discussion here about would it be mythic now? Would it have been mythic then? And I think the emphasis is on applying modern day mythic what people look for in mythic versus how the card would have been seen at the time so right off the bat in white i mean you know and if that definition of how we're looking at these sounded different than other times we've explained it before well welcome to the show as, yeah, yeah. i mean i was right just thinking the... i'm like that you don't we usually look at it as a back then yeah, we do. Is that not what I said? It didn't sound like that's what you said. Okay. <laughs> we look at would it have been if Mythic had existed at the time, would it have been would it have been Mythic? The only times we have really spirited discussion about it is usually when we don't necessarily agree on what what Mythic itself always qualifies as. But yeah. like the two different so, cycles of legendary creatures in the Kamigawa set. We actually did a whole follow-up episode after that episode. Yeah. But that was long enough ago now the where I don't remember. <laughs> it was because I was arguing the whole time for the Myosians because they're big and dumb uh and and super expensive but really impactful and not at all like, you know, playable in some instances. Uh, and I think a couple people stood up for me and was like, yeah, that's totally what Mythic would be, is super expensive and big and dumb. Ouch. Whereas other times it can be, you know, for for uh, for playing purposes, it can be actually, like, you know, efficient stuff. Okay, if we let Brian keep trying to explain things, we're just going to muddy the, the waters more. So Transcendence, okay. I'm guessing, is where you were going in white. I was going to say Angel of Retribution What is not a mythic card. Oh, okay. Thank you. But, yeah, Transcendence is the white card. Like, we can talk about some of these others. I kind of have a thing for Reborn Hero. Especially, you know, new player Brian was like, it can't die. Yeah. That's amazing. No, seriously. Yeah. I was like, how do I make that into a deck? Right. But... And so maybe we can talk about that. But straight off the bat, I mean, Transcendence. Oh my god, this was before Vigilance. When was Vigilance? I always forget this. Vigilance was actually fairly recent in well, the... Well, okay. We're I old. That was introduced in a, in a later core set or a later expansion. I feel like it was a core set where they finally were like, alright, we're going to name it. It's Vigilance. And we were like, ah... Oh, well, sorry, not, not another tangent. No. no. So Transcendence for three and three white symbols, which was not something they did all the time there with that color commitment, um, is an enchantment. Uh, I'm reading the Oracle text, and I think it actually has remained unchanged. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. It's enchantment. You don't lose the game for having zero or less life. Right off the bat, you're like, okay. When you have 20 or more life, you lose the game. Whenever you lose life, you gain two life for each one life you lost. I remember getting this in one of my first boosters and being like, this is amazing. And I have no idea what to do with it. And I just stared at it forever. And especially, I mean, I've always been a bit of a Johnny, but not a Johnny. You know, he's different. I'm not a cat. But I've always been, you know, like, a, a, I love, I see I see building decks as a challenge. And, like, how do I put something together that no one has ever done before? But I was also, like, 
I have no idea how to make this work. So I, I think it was a while before I built any sort of actual deck that used Transcendence. But, I mean, come on. This says... This literally flips how life gain, how life totals work for you. Yeah, it's and a it bizarre costs six. Card. Yeah, it's bizarre. I think this is totally mythic. Does anybody disagree with me on this at all? No. Okay. This was on my list. Yeah. Because it's it I'm... it's it's one of those things that completely overhauls the way the game works. For I mean, for you. it's pretty infamous too. Like, I don't know that it was ever like a top tier card with a competitive play or anything like that. But no, there you are can tell weird a... like you can't die combos with transcendence. Oh sure, like with you know red enchantments that say you can't gain life. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, There's multiple effects like that. But, um, regardless of its playability or not. I think you could tell uh, anybody that's been playing for long enough, you say Transcendence, and you you know what it does. I may say um, uh, Boulder Trap, and maybe you remember what it does, and maybe you don't. But Transcendence, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so when a card like that sticks with you, I kind of feel like... Um, it, it's it's definitely impactful. So, yep. Don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it because clearly, obviously, mythic. Yeah. Uh, Did anybody also, else want to? Draconic looked it up. It was actually Champions of Kamigawa, is where Vigilance was uh, introduced as a keyword. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ninth edition that... was the first core set to have it. That's so way... not as recent as we thought. No. At least that's according Holy to the cow. MTG fandom wiki. But I'm still pretty sure that's right. Which would have... I forget what the, re the release schedule used to look like. Which would have been re released first? Champions of... Kamigawa or 9th edition? Well, or again, according to the wiki, it says Vigilance was introduced as a keyword in Champions of Kamigawa. 9th edition oh, was the first core set to follow. Okay. So, Maybe that yeah. was an off year for corsets. Could be. Yeah, Magic's release schedule used to be really bizarre, but not as bizarre as it seems to be uh, these days. Anyway. Uh, it was odd, but it was very well <laughs> It was bizarre in a different way. Mm. Yeah. You could actually keep track of it back then. Like, because it wasn't being released all the time. Just when when it was released might might have stumped you a bit. Hmm. So, is there anything else in white? Like, Possessed Nomad I... is cool, but not mythic. No. Reborn Hero is cool, but not mythic. Vengeful Dreams is not mythic. Not mythic. I, I look Morning Tide, potentially. Because it's in an all black set or in a black heavy set, mm -hmm. that the fact that it removes stuff from all graveyards, I thought that that seems really powerful in this set. And it's a graveyard block. Odyssey block was a graveyard block as well. Oh, so they might have made it mythic so it wouldn't be gumming up uh, the rare slot in draft. Maybe. Maybe. Because you don't want too many of these uh, in draft, or otherwise, you know, it sort of eliminates entire... It's it's uh, still strategy. just a... Well, you're it's only still just a opening. utility card. Yeah, you're only going to be opening one Torment pack anyway, so... Oh, did they do I, Big Big Small back then? I thought it was Big Big Small. Oh, Okay. They've changed it so much over the years. That is true. I, yeah, I don't. I never remember. Well, by the same token, yeah, which Draconic just said in chat too. What about Major Tarot? Yeah, that's uh, the other one that I was thinking about had the most potential because it's a you know a bird soldier legend who offers this you know probably one one sided board wipe. Yeah, what's what's she do, Mike? So Major Tarot, three and a white. 
for 2-3, I guess now would be Legendary Bird Soldier. Uh, has flying. And 3 white-white, sacrifice Major Tarot, exile all black creatures. Not to mention, I guess she... He? She? I don't know. Uh is featured in a lot of the flavor text in the set, right? Mm -hmm. So clearly this is somebody that is is featured prominently in the story, or at least as the story as it's presented on the cards. So, yeah, I think being a legendary creature is always in the plus column for Mythics, as far as wanting at to least make back sure then. it stands out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think between Major Tarot and Morning Tide, I think Major Tarot might be more likely to be mythic. I 100% agree. I don't think Morning Tide is is a, is bad, and I do think it, it has a place in the set. But given that it's just straight utility, even useful utility, I would still be like, hmm. But Major Tarot, I think so. Reborn Hero is neat, and like I said, it definitely, for a new player, it definitely feels like, whoa, but not not to the same extent as the ones we've already mentioned. Yeah, yeah, not at all. But we knew that white, white wasn't going to be bereft. You don't want to give white players nothing, because then somebody that's really into that color is going to be like, huh. But clearly white was not the focus of this set. Yeah, clearly. So blue? So blue. Like, we're good on white, right? Yeah, that's everything. Yes. I think so. So blue, if we're talking about legendary creatures, uh, there is Ambassador Laquatus, and he was important to the story as well, because... Uh, so if you remember from our discussion about Odyssey... Um, with Odyssey, they kind of wanted to get away from the traditional creature types that had been the focus of the game for so long. You know, goblins in red and merfolk in blue and all that. So uh, blue had, in Odyssey, gave us the cephalid. And then in Torment, they're like, here's a merfolk. And you're like, wait, what? But he's like, he's a bad guy. He He's kind of like the... He's the ambassador, but he's he's like trying to basically undermine the entire society. And he does play a, an important part in the story. So, Ambassador Laquatus, for one, a blue and a blue, is a 1-3 uh, merfolk legend. The now legendary creature merfolk. Let me open up the actual tab. Uh, he's a merfolk wizard now. Ooh, so he's a wizard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, uh, that changes things. That, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, that uh, hmm, that has different implications now. Uh, but for three mana, he is the activated ability. Target player mills three cards. Notice this is not a tap ability. So, yeah. this this can be a win condition on its own. Is it, it can also extreme? be a like a really good enabler of your own graveyardy stuff. It can. This was in Torment, and, you know, Mike exists, so yes. Yeah. And I but mean, like one Mike mana... Said, for... it, was a, uh, it was also just a graveyard set. Yes, uh, also true. Yes. I, I poke fun at Mike because we because he's That's known he's for, for, for enjoying these sorts of tactics, but... Well, I hadn't learned to... At the time, I hadn't learned to play properly in that respect. But... So a one mana for one card, milling one card, is not necessarily the optimal one, but the fact that this is repeatable, and you can just, at the end of the last opponent's turn, just straight up mill yourself or somebody for three, as often as you have three mana. And in a world where Counterspell was actually still standard legal, just being able to keep mana open, and they're like, oh, you're not going to play spells, okay, well, I'll continue to activate this is actually pretty good. Buh. He's smart. And he's smarmy. Look at that face. He smiles with poison lips, by the way. He does. Yeah. 
Mwah. So like, I can so, see a case for him being mythic. But I'm not entirely sure. He, he's not super powerful, but I'm thinking legendary status and the fact that he, he has a... At what was at the time a kind of a unique activated ability. Oh, yeah. Um, I think maybe. The other blue legend in this set is Lawan, which for some reason was the other card in this set that I just kept pulling multiple copies of. Oh. And I'm like, somebody play blue against me! And they're all like, no. And I'm like, okay then. <laughs> No, I remember getting at least two or three copies of this and being like, yeah, I got nothing. Uh, so Lawan, Cephalid Empress, for three and a blue, is a two, three. Wait, open it up. She's a Cephalid Noble. Oh. oh. Cool. Because she's the Empress. Oh, so she's noble. But uh, her card text is, when Lawan, Cephalid Empress, enters the battlefield... Return all blue creatures your opponents control to their owner's hands. So bounce everyone else's blue creatures. And your opponents can't cast blue creature spells. She's blue hate in blue. But I mean, like, that is... That is just stupidly powerful against a blue deck... That has that, creatures. <laughs> that relies on creatures and can't bounce her or counter her well. But, I mean, in theory, in theory, this is super powerful and restrictive. It's just also super narrow and easy to answer. Yeah. Like, usually you don't put hate cards in, in at Mythic. Unless they're like, just uh, absolutely obscene, but since this is just blue, it's like eh. Yeah, I, I don't. Of the two, I'm kind of more. Not that we have to necessarily pick a limit, but I'd be probably be more in favor of Mister Ambassador than her. But, uh, but those yeah. are the two. Dark, what's your thing? Well, dark, you muted. Sorry. No, oh, there he is. Um, there's really nothing in blue that just jumps out at me as this is mythic. Oh, not even just among the two creatures we talked about, but just in general? Yeah. Like, Alter Reality sounds like it'd be cool, but not mythic. Yeah, I know. The Vandal is... Eh. <laughs> Man. I mean, yeah. And I looked at Plagiarize and like, oh, you're going to draw a card? No, you're not. Yeah, I'll do it. Ha! <laughs> For play, four play. mana. For four For mana, what? you don't get to draw a card. I do it instead. Yeah, but the, this can also be in response to their card draw spell. So... I like the thought of plagiarize, but at four mana, it's pretty darn balanced. Yeah, that's and... the thing. Having to keep four mana open. I mean, when you when you play a really good plagiarize, you feel like the world's biggest genius. But you really do. You have to <laughs> keep like... you have to keep four mana up to do it, which is tough. I mean, it's why I love Notion Thief because Notion Thief is plagiarize, but on a body and I think cheaper or with a different, but it's also black, right? It's uh, blue black. I thought notion thief cost four. Let's check. I'm going to check. Remember. I'll, I'll let you check. I'll let you check. Uh, pos possessed Aven. No. Yeah. The possessed Retra creatures are solidly a neat rear cycle. Yeah. Retraced image. I, I, for whatever reason I got, I guess I bought a lot of torment. I ended up with four copies of it. And the main thing I would ever use it for was, like, getting out extra land drops. Just huh. fine. You know, that's actually pretty good use for uh, 
<laughs> a single blue mana. Turbulent Dreams has... Of these, I think that's the one to me. Well, we said the White Dreams is not, and that yeah, doesn't the... mean that none of the Dreams can, but so obviously... So each of the Dreams cards, you have to discard X cards from your hand as an additional cost, and they do X thing. So Vengeful Dreams Which... is the white one. It says remove uh, exile X target attacking creatures. The blue one says uh, bounce X target non-land permanents. Return X target non land per oh to their owners okay yeah I was reading it as return them to uh, uh, to your hand like return non land permanents to their hand yeah and for whatever reason in my head I was reading graveyard yeah your brain your brain was adding words <laughs> I know how that is yeah. and I mean where it's coming from <laughs> that's what the I brain mean was. oh yeah. And I mean, I like the Dreams cards, and they're in a set with not just Graveyard Shenanigans, but Madness. But Madness, so yeah. I like them. I just feel like I feel like they're very good, rare cards. I think so. I think if it did what Dirk's brain told it it did, it would definitely be better. Uh, hey, Mike, <laughs> was was is Notion Thief cost three or four? Four, two, blue. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but you get a body out of it, too. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, it must be good. Uh, a card that costs four that people played in Vintage at one time. Whoa. That's, uh... Yep. All um, right. Uh, so, are we, are we moving on to... So, blue, we're kind of conflicted about. Blue, like... Since blue has, well, nothing, uh, then I think Laquatus is definitely the mythic. And we might I throw so. Lawan in there just because, but just, again, that seems kind of meh. Yeah, there was yeah. nothing that of a non-legendary type that sort of says, I'm a mythic card. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't feel strongly about any blue cards either. Like, False yeah. Memories is just weird. It's like, hey... Okay, let me read this to you. For one and a blue, it's an instant. And you you mill seven cards from from your, your library, right? So you're milling seven cards. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the turn, you exile seven cards in your graveyard. So it's like a, a temporary threshold boost. Yeah, temporary it is. threshold, and you can also tutor some flashback spells into your graveyard. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, I forgot flashback was in the set, too. Damn, this was a graveyard set. It was. It's like 100%. Was like the, oh, they were not fooling. Like OG graveyard set, block, graveyard block, yeah. Hmm. Okay, but so. Now we, the big now we get to the meaty stuff, yeah. So, not every single one of these because no but there's a lot more to dig into here and the very first card is chainer and chainer is absolutely a mythic i like just yeah. no joke and he's literally the most important pop he's the most important character in the set question mark for Kamal because Kamal is the protagonist of the entire block but Chainer is the one that actually makes this set like that makes the story do anything here Chainer was story wise a pit fighter for the Cabal and he won I guess I think the prize of the Mirari and using its power he created the actual nightmare creatures that are so pervasive here and his his reality with the with the uh, Mirari starts to warp everything which is why the set is the way that it is so oh. from a story from a story perspective like th this is you know what if you gave this guy near in near ultimate power so chainer dementia master 
for three and two black. A legendary now human minion, which he was a minion legend already, so now he's human. Um, he's a 3-3. Three, three. Nightmare creatures get plus one, plus one. And because this is old school, all nightmare creatures, not just the ones you control. Pay three black and three life. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is black and is a nightmare in addition to its other creature types. Uh -huh. when, Chainer, when Chainer Dementia Master leaves the battlefield, exile all nightmares. Yeah, Chainer was not messing around. No. So, I, I keep referencing myself as a new player because that was the mind frame I was in at the time. And I realize lots of people have been playing for years, so I'm not trying to make that the definitive um, reaction, but it was my reaction. And I do think sometimes when you have Mythic cards, they sell the set. So I do think it's handy to, to look at it as, hey, what is somebody's first impression? And as someone new to Magic, I knew immediately, I'm like... I don't like cards that make me pay life. Like there were there were other black cards that were like pay life to do this. I'm like no, but this is one that I 100. <laughs> this is one that I 100% got behind, and I think part of it is the shared fate player in me that is just like I just want other people's stuff. I had visions of like I'm going to kill everybody's stuff and then it's mine. All mine, and it's getting bigger at the same time. So, um, but Brian's looking at like a pain land, and it's like pay one life. And Brian's talking to his bound binder, going, No, <laughs> yeah, but but Chainer, I'm like, Yeah, I'll pay three, I'll pay three a couple times. Yeah, like I was yeah. not a new player at this point, like I had played back in the day. And I read Inquest for even longer than, uh, like, way past the time I stopped playing. So, like, I, reading this card, you know, years later, I was like, damn! <laughs> yeah. Like, three mana and three life for any creature? For any creature. With a buff? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even today, I'm reading this going, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The, the fact that this creature is not awful by today's standards is, is pretty awesome. So, important to the story. Check. Legendary creature. Check. Big effect. Check. Stupidly badass and, and uh, especially for, like, ca more casual players. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mythic, all in favor... I'm pretty sure, yeah. 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 Yeah, Chainer's pretty bad. So, baller. So, he's the first card alphabetically. There are other cards that I think could be mythic, but I just read one. I'm kind of curious what everybody else thinks. Uh, Laquatus is champion. That was a pretty solid yes to very high maybe for me as well. So. Yeah, what's it do, Dirk? Uh, for four and two black, it's a six-three nightmare horror, and <clears throat> let's see if let me click on see nightmare horror still. Uh, when Laquatus is champion enters the battlefield, target player loses six life. When Laquatus is champion leaves the battlefield, that player gains six life. One black, regenerate Laquatus is champion. Yeah, the fact that it could just eat six life out of somebody. Um, you can take someone out of the game. Yeah, that that they may never get that six life back. Yeah, they can't because... gain their six life back if they're dead. Dude, pointing uh -huh. at own head. Dot gif. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I I know from onslaught block there was a lot of you have to tap to regenerate something. Mm. You can. Uh, there is no reason you should not be beating somebody to death with this creature because if they block with something big enough to kill it you can regenerate it yeah now there's yeah, a thing a, that a, players nowadays have to remember the whole give stuff minus toughness 
was nowhere near as common now uh, then as it is now. Yeah. Nowhere. And yes, a lot of destroy effects also said that creature can't be regenerated. But you know how many of them hit black creatures? Not nearly enough. Very few. Yeah. Like terror uh wasn't even around at this point, but we had dark banishing, right? So we hit it artifact creatures, but still not black ones. And okay, red, you're gonna be like, all right, you know, deal it three damage, you like regenerate. So blue, bounce it. Okay, you get your life back. Guess what? I'm taking it again next turn. See, I want to had... say the first time this hit the board and started making the making its rounds around the board, I instantly uh, like I, I puckered up a little bit. It was like, I oh mean, my gosh, this this six... thing is going to come my way, and it's going to. The six power is no joke. It's not. I had a blue black deck that aimed to play a Laquatus as champion and then clone it as many times as possible. <laughs> I didn't even need to hit anybody with it. Wow. Yeah. I was like, what'll that do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can also play silly blink games with it. Oh. And so those are two separate triggered abilities. Yeah. Darn you, Mike. Jeez. Explain that to the people that... All right. So, it enters the battlefield. The first trigger that makes someone lose life goes on the stack. You respond by... blinking it. So... it leaves the battlefield... And that leaves the battlefield trigger ends up. Wait, that player. Let me think about this. No. Uh, before I keep talking, I think I need to review the way that linked abilities work. I I don't know if the, that player in the second one will be referring to the target player of the first one if that first ability hasn't resolved yet. No. That's what you want, though, right? That's what I want, but I don't know if that's what happens. Right. Anyway, whatever. So there's a possibility well, that there's a funny trick, but I yeah. need to look at I mean, you can still do other stuff like play it with red enchantments that say players can't gain life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, the pre release promo version of this that was printed in Russian was misprinted. And that second triggered ability says when the Claudius' champion leaves the battlefield, you gain six life. Oh my god, it did! Because when I was reading this, I was like, I don't know if that's right. Is that right? But oh no, I was that... thinking of the the misprint. Oh yeah. my god, that's so rude. Six mana, when the, six three with regenerate, when this enters the battlefield, target opponent loses six life. When this leaves the battlefield, you gain six life. Middle finger, just wow i mean not many people notice since it was printed in russian but... oh yeah it was printed in russian i'm, I'm pulled that up so that the uh the chat can but... see it mm -hmm. oh okay I, I again i think probably yeah yeah i'm pretty I'm sure sorry. that the the champion should be mythic yeah. why are the I'm scans so... in gatherer so crappy for torment like in scryfall this looks a lot prettier Oh man, there are a lot of torment scans that just look yuck. Yeah, I don't know why. That's weird. Yeah. So, Dark, I think you're spot on with Laquatus as champion. I imagine you would have more mythics in black because there's more black cards. Right. Uh, Mike, what do you got? Let's see. Besides that, doop doop do. -do, -do. Chat mentioned Hypnox just because Chat. it's big and splashy, but it is oh. big and splashy, but it's like almost too big and splashy. Yeah. It's almost, well, almost too I, big. I, 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 I don't know. Um, maybe we're going back to the Myosians here at 10 mana, but which I realize this is 11, but I, I think I probably would agree because of what it does. So, so Hypnox for eight and three black. 11. 
Is an eight you know, eight? Is it still? Uh, let's open it up. You don't see that eight in the generic mana, like ever. Yeah, not not terribly often. So yeah, it is still a nightmare horror when it enters the battlefield. Oh, it has flying, but it's an eight eight flyer. Let's not forget that part. Yeah. <laughs> When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, that's important, you exile all cards from target opponent's hand. And when Hypnox leaves the battlefield, you return the exiled cards to their owner's hand. Yeah. So, yes, it costs 11. It is an 8-8 with flying that if you cast it correctly, the hard way, the opponent's answers don't matter. Or at least the ones they had in their hand. Unless it's instant speed. In which case, you know, dies to removal is not really an argument. Uh, in the in this instance. Or I, I think in most instances. Um, I, I get where you're coming from as far as is this uncastable? Who? that's a lot. Uh, Dark Ritual was in fact, I think, not in standard at the time. <laughs> um... 11 is a lot. What's that? I said what? But, but I mean, it's super big. It's super splashy. And when somebody plays it and they're like, oh, well, I'll just on my turn, oh. Oh. Crap. Because to get your stuff, to get your cards back, all you have to do is, you know, kill an 8-8. Yeah. Is that all? I, I, what? From top deck. <laughs> from top deck, yeah. So, yeah, I think it could be. I think it could be mythic. I don't know that it. it's not as strong a contender as Chainer, and it's not as efficient as Laquatus' champion. But the art is also awesome. I'm still not sure what I'm seeing. Like, this takes the Nightmare like concept to another level it is very uh lovecraftian it is super lovecraft and there's no scale birds no, so yeah. i think that's the problem yeah <laughs> yeah the but way that's the thing you really gotta like hold it close to your face and take a good look at it to see what's going on in the art it's yeah. pretty cool though yeah my brother here's the, i i like it i i think it could be a contender could have been a contender. I mean, it's definitely a possibility as a mythic. I just, I think the other two are probably better. Probably. Uh, Chewy, could, what's and this one is the... one I could see going either way. Yeah. Chewy, was there one that we haven't mentioned that you thought in black could be a mythic? Well, Mike never actually answered last time I was, because I just jumped in when he went, oh, hmm. With <laughs> so hypnos. Mike, so Mike, is there another one that you thought could be mythic? Um, I can't remember what we had said about the alternate wind condition cards that we already talked about in Odyssey. I think we said that they were more on a case by case basis than some than some um cycles. I think we had said I, I think we had a discussion for a while about Battle of Wits because <laughs> because it's Battle of Wits. But, like, Epic Contest is, like... Well, epic Struggle we haven't gotten to yet. Yeah, Chance, I know, and I'm Chance giving encounter. a... Pretty... Yeah. yeah. Chance Encounter would have been the other one Um, in yeah. Odyssey. Mortal Kombat is the one here. S2, Black, Black, it's an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 20 or more creature cards in your graveyard, you win. <laughs> Which, as someone that has tried to make this card work... Even with creature heavy decks and milling decks, and it is not as easy as it sounds. Yes, I'm sure there's ways to turbo this out. I get that. Trying to do it myself, I have not had much success with it. 20 is a big number. Yeah, this one. I'm not saying it's. This one feels more like a like a a good rare. Mm -hmm. to me 
And I, I can't I'm, put a like a reasoning behind that. It just does. It's a gut feeling. <laughs> I, I think I'm. I think I'm on board with that. And I, I agree with you. I don't know that it's really a. I think it's just a barely balanced card. Un, unlike Battle of Wits, which changes the game on a fundamental level before you even sit down. This, yes, there again, it can change the way you play, but not to the same extent. So. I, I'm with Chewy. I don't know that I can say with any sort of definition all the reasons for that, but I, I do I do agree with Chewy. Solid rare. Also, I can tell that I've been playing video games for way too long because Mortal Kombat with a C does not look right. Raise your hand if you hear the music in your head right now. Oh, have been since Mike said it the first time, yeah. I yeah. have. So, <laughs> yeah. And I've been resisting the urge to go. Nir, 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 nir. <laughs> Demonetize. Yep. <laughs> uh, what do we think about. There are two creatures that on I had on here that I was like. I don't think these are mythic, but they're just stupid good. Ooh, is it Icarus in are... the shade? It's Icarus in the shade because they are both um, super efficient. I think both of these saw a lot of play. And I mean like a it's lot of a play. Lot. Like super a lot scary. of play in tournaments, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll take the shade, and then somebody else could talk about Icarus, the shade. This is the most innocuous looking thing and i think when i was a new player i'm like why is this rare but nantuko shade for two black it's a two one insect shade and it has activated ability pay a black nantuko shade gets plus one plus one until end of turn and if you're going like i don't get it i don't blame you because nothing about this screams like oh this is busted this is so busted like, yeah, if you go back and look at the old shades from older sets, they all cost like four for a one one. Well, they they cost three, but they start at zero one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that the was the frozen shade, right? One, like like frozen one, frozen two, shade, one. yeah, yeah. And I think the horror shade H O A R was didn't that one cost? Four? I think that one cost four for a. It cost four, and it started at one two. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So you were paying the one up front for a permanent uh, plus to your, your frozen shade. This costs, whereas this costs two black, which you're probably in mono black anyway. Or all your lands are going to tap for black, even if you're in something else. And you start out with two power. And it's really difficult to articulate how big a difference this is. But I had my face caved in by these things a lot i mean like we talk a lot about psychotog and yes it was the thing in the room all the time but but mono black aggro thing, bruh <laughs> yeah and this thing was coming down and as soon as it was down and they untapped you couldn't kill it nothing you put in the way would ever stop it and they just you all their mana was either on pumping this thing or killing your stuff. Straight up. Yeah, and this then is... if you managed to get a board and make it stupid, they would just mutilate and cast another one. And now you've got to yeah. find a way to kill it or else you're taking like eight next turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's was, crazy. it was brutal. Like this little insect shade, you're like, huh? And you're like, no. This got the work done. I think it was reprinted later, and it was a rare. I don't recall if the set it was reprinted and had Mythics or not. I'm going to pull that up. It was reprinted it in M13. M11, yeah. sorry. M11, yeah. So, yes. So, rare is a, exactly the appropriate rarity. It does not need to be Mythic, but this is a very good rare card. Oh, like, yeah. really good. Yeah. So... And then there's Icarid, which is also super efficient. Icarid's so bizarre. So, may I? 
You may. For three and a black, it's a three. Is it still a horror? Just a horror? It is. It's a three one horror. It has haste, and at the beginning of the end step, you sacrifice it. But at the beginning of your upkeep, if it's in your graveyard, you can exile a different black creature from your uh, graveyard and put Icarid back on the battlefield. And it has haste. So it was just, as long as you were, something else was dying, you always had three points of attack. And later, yeah. probably six points of attack to jump out and hit people in the face. Yeah. And then this without instant rare... speed removal or, you know, blockers, what are they going to do? Yeah. This was another card I got a couple copies of early, and I think I sold them off very quickly because I was like, I'm playing multiplayer, and a 3-1 that dies every turn was not doing it for me. And I so wish I'd held on to them because in eternal formats, Icarid took off because you yeah, can't Icarid keep was it down. One of the parts was, was Icarid ever one of the parts of the mentalist stretch decks or am I thinking of something else? I know the Narcomoebas were, but I can never remember if Icarids were in an earlier version of it. it wouldn't surprise me. I don't. Maybe not Mantalus Dredge, but they were in Dredge decks. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm. I mean, yeah. Oh, absolutely, because they'd be one of the things you'd pop out. So yeah, and yeah. since Dredge wasn't for several years after this, you know. Yeah. But even at the time, I I think I I saw some of the potential. It just wasn't what I wanted to do as a player. But I think it even though it didn't take off right away, it was still played quite a bit. So again, I don't think this is in unique enough it to be mythic. Yeah, it is still fairly unique, but you know what I mean? It's just not I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, Somebody think we'd had Nether Shadows and Ashen Ghouls and whatnot from back in the day, and the um, other whatever the other thing is that jump back out of the graveyard without mana. So it's not like it was super obscure or bizarre. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was plenty of precedent for this sort of thing back in the day. It was just good in a graveyard block when you yeah. could discard it and start jumping it out for free. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I don't think it's I don't think it's terribly mythic-y. Okay. But Although I just thought of I... the two, if we were, one of them was going to be, it would be the Icarid over the shade. Probably. Probably, because it does have the ability to come back for free. So yeah. Yeah. Um eh. agreed. And 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 I knew and I and I'm not trying to take up our time with stuff that clearly isn't, but we're talking about torment rares. I just couldn't not talk about those two cards. That yeah, right. Feel like, yeah. Uh, anything else in black? So we know mutilate isn't because board board wipes don't be, aren't yeah. mythic. Yeah. Uh, it, Singer it vampire is, is so weird to see it rare. Mutilate is another card that is just dumb at what it does. When you said like with Laquatus's champion minus X minus X was not around a whole lot, you're right. And then this does this stupidly well yeah always costs four yeah so anyway also good still sweeper you were talking about singer vampire a uh, singer vampire is just weird to see it rare <laughs> yeah. now, it had now in the game for a while because it was considered too strong yeah like like sarah angel yeah it it being back i think felt like a pretty big deal um Newer player like myself, I, you know, I wasn't sure of all the history, but hey, this is a creature that can get big forever, yeah. and this art is amazing. It really yeah. is. I was always very happy with the new singer vampire art. Oh yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but... Chat asked about Dawn of the Dead earlier. Yeah, and that was another one that I was thinking of mentioning. I think okay. it just feels really good. Well, tell um, us about it, Mike. 
so for two black 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 it's a rare enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life and also at the beginning of your upkeep you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield it gains haste until end of turn and then you exile it at end of turn so any creature can jump out of your graveyard and make one more attack any creature which is pretty awesome yes I had this in some deck back in the day but it didn't last very long because in, again in multiplayer getting one creature back to hit someone with and then it's gone forever didn't yeah, really it's gotta be a particularly yeah. good one yeah, yeah it didn't now, really fit my play style that yeah. well <laughs> I'm I'm looking at and now I'm like wow I can just you know sacrifice that before the trigger at the end of turn. This doesn't have any of the usual stuff we see now. Like if it would leave play for any reason, exile instead, right? I so, never noticed that. You're absolutely right. But at the time, wow. I'm like, well, yeah, clearly it has to go away. So eh. I think I have a copy floating around somewhere. Maybe if I ever play Magic in real life ever again, I'll try it. Would it be mythic in Could this be. set? Maybe, yeah. I mean, you pay the initial cost up front, and then other than the cost of a life, you get a creature back every turn. And if that creature has any enters the battlefield effects, that's that could be really huge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Insidious Dreams, the 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 Black Dreams card, um, is is really uh, good, but is really good. It's you know you tutor for X cards and then put those cards on top of your library in any order. And it's an instant. It also, well, I missed that. Mm-hmm. But it does cost four, whereas a lot of the others cost yeah like all two. the cost two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this is also yeah. Insidious Dreams in black was part of a vertical cycle. So there was a common one and an uncommon one and a rare one in black. But the other colors just had the rare one. But black being mm-hmm. the thing in this set, that makes sense. So mm-hmm. Really good. Safe at rare. Last Laugh is... <laughs> God, I love Last Laugh. It's kind of like a pestilence except not because you don't it's a pestilence it. that can accidentally go off and kill everything and go forever <laughs> yeah. yeah okay it could accidentally end the game if you're not paying attention yeah which is why i i put it in the the pestilence deck which was full of pro black creatures is a black and white deck right mm-hmm. and i would always yeah. be sitting there doing math i'm like okay <laughs> There's a one in a toughness. There's a two. Damn it, there's no three. I, rem- okay, I remember you playing that deck <laughs> and your turns taking a long time. Yeah, because, because of the all of a sudden something would die. And we'd be like, oh crap, we gotta do last laugh, everybody. <laughs> yep. 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 So last laugh so la- for two black blacks is an enchantment that says whenever a permanent other than last laugh dies... Last Laugh deals one damage to each creature and each player. And then when no creatures are on the battlefield, sacrifice Last Laugh. So once, you know, everything's dead, Last Laugh goes away. Like I said, my creatures are all pro-black, so there was always just... Okay, so hang on, that'll kill that. If I kill, if I Pestilence once, that'll die, which will cause Last Laugh to go off and then that'll die. Wait, okay, and then I can Pestilence again, and those two will die, which means it's two more Last Laugh Trigger. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> and, and, and there was a lot of, laugh. and and then, I, like, it also deals damage to each player, so I'm like, well, that might yeah. kill Dirk. Oh, God. That might kill me. Wait, hang on. <laughs> Did you have a Circle of Protection Black? Uh, yeah, but because each damage happens individually, you had to pay one for each one you wanted to prevent. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Sphere of Grace. Had that been printed yet? Probably. 
And Urza's, Urza's armor Urza's was good right? for this. Because yeah. Urza's armor, I could just kill you all and not care. But Yeah. <laughs> Wait. So Last Laugh is, again, fun. Yeah, it's definitely a solid good. rare. Yeah. And I think that's it for the black rares, except for Shambling Swarm. which uh, is Also a card that I like, but still not good. Honestly, of all of the black cards we have just talked about, has probably aged the worst. Yeah. Well, again, yeah. it's minus one, minus one counters, which at the time were not but, very common. But then they go away. Oh, but then they like, go they away, even, yeah. Then they go away. It might as well just be... I mean, because it's split up, it's probably easier to track that way. But how many effects have you put on minus one, minus one counters that don't stay? Like, that's just weird. And... Eh. Yeah. Okay, so that is black. Yay, black. Yay, black. So then we go so, to red. Which is not as bad as sometimes. <laughs> red which, rares are funny. I was going to say, I'm looking. It's pretty bad. <laughs> red <laughs> rares. Well, Grim Lava Mancer is amazing. Grim Lava Mancer is amazing. Grim La Lava Mancer is the dope. Is just... Uh, yeah. Mike, what's Grim Lava Mancer, and why is it so important? Yeah, Mike, with your face. Grim Lava Mancer is awesome, because for a single red mana, it's a 1-1 one, one human wizard, you can pay a red and tap and exile two cards in your graveyard, and Grim Lava Mancer, Lava Mancer deals two damage to any target. Yeah, Grim that Lava seems... Mancer was big in so many different kinds of decks back in uh, over the course of uh, Standard, the, the, the Torment yeah. Standard. Yeah, and other formats since it's been printed. Yeah. Yeah. You you might look at this and be like, eh? But especially, I mean, there's lots of decks this slides into, but this is just wrong in a red burn deck. Yeah, it gives, where... you, it gives you reach for the burn deck because one of the problems with a burn deck is once you use all your spells and you're just sitting there with nothing to do until you draw more spells. But Grim Lava yeah. Mancer turned all those spells in your graveyard into more burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then yeah. when when the the fetch lands got printed, which was just the next block, yeah. That then you suddenly you have even more ammo. You can yeah. just on Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah. Yeah, Grim Lava Mancer does so much work. Would would it be mythic? I mean, it's the best red card in the set, like, straight up. Yeah, it's an interesting question, because now, like, no, because, you know, it's been printed as a regular rare since then. But now we get into a situation where I'm wondering if, at the time, it could have been, you know, you know the efficient mythic. You know, the like efficient the, mythic. Like Ice of St. Traft or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the, the one uh, that everyone the complains the about. They only made this mythic to drive up sales. Mm -hmm. Like it the, totally uh, could green... have been that one in the set. You're not, you know, that is a good point. If it was mythic, it would have been that card. It would have <laughs> been that one. What was the green raptor from um... the the dancing raptor? What the hell oh, was that, that card? The, yeah, the dancing raptor. Yeah, I can you, see. You know what I know it, but but it was not mythic, but it was made mythic. Because it was just too good at what it did, right? Voracious so... something? Hatchling? Is that a different card? No, that's a different card. Crap. Yeah. But you know the one I'm talking about. I do, so... yeah. From, uh... Yeah. No. I think it was Death Something Raptor. It was... Death for, Mist. It was in... Death Mist? Death, Death Mist, Mist? Raptor. Yeah, it was in yeah. Cons of Tarkir. There we go. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Or was I was it like, that was an Ixalan. No, it was way before Ixalan. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe it was in Dragons of Tarkir. Was it in Fate Reforged? No, no, no. Oh, gosh, I don't remember anymore. Oh, my I, I'll look it up. I I'll got look it, it up. already. Okay. Deathma. Deathma. Yeah, that's the fourth one when you type in Deathma. It was from Commander 2019. No, it was in Dragons, yeah. Okay. Dragons of Tarkir, so it wasn't the last set in the block. Okay. So it even had Megamorph. Ugh. Yeah, it yeah. had Megamorph, which is the thing no one remembers about it. <laughs> mm. 
Because it's the part that matters the very least. Yeah, because Megamorph is kind of yeah. stupid. <laughs> but, so I will try to make a case. So Grim Love Mancer could be the efficient one. I will try to make a case for, because I think every color probably has at least one mythic. I would try to make a case for Petrodon. Mostly because of lack of competition. For six and two <laughs> red, it is a big guy. For six and two red, it is a five six nightmare beast. When it enters the battlefield, all right, I'm pulling up the oracle text because easier that way. One second. All right. When Petrodon enters the battlefield, exile two target lands. When Petrodon leaves the battlefield, return the exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. And as fire breathing, pay a red, it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. The fact that it can remove two lands is not a small deal. Because if they're if somebody's in multicolored, maybe you take their two swamps or you make it harder for them to to eliminate but it also just puts you ahead on mana period and i'm kind of petering out because that's literally the only thing yeah because that's it <laughs> that's yeah. it yeah but you know there's grim lava mancer there's petrodon Balthor the Stout is here, and he's pretty cool, and he is a storyline character. I guess he's kind of like the mentor to Kamal, but he's a barbarian lord. Woo. You know, I'm... Okay. Yeah, Balthor is, is a whole, uh, totally not mythic. Yeah, so... Yeah. And Skull Scorch, just no. Just no. I'm sorry. It wants to be him to Turok, which would be sweet, but... Uh... I mean, four damage for two mana is not bad either, still. No. I've never been able to take that art seriously, though. I have a couple copies of Skull Scorch. Well, yeah, the art's like... kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dirk, you got anything in red? You've been awful quiet. Probably because you're muted. Probably. So I said not as bad as sometimes, and that's true because the bar for red is sometimes really low. Yeah. Uh, Dirk did come back, right? Yeah. I'm yes. he, he typed back. Dirk, anything in red? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I looked over it earlier and was like no no may, no uh, no like devastating Ooh. dreams is just buh <clears throat> yeah devastating dreams can be crazy but it's also a sweeper so which okay. sweepers are not necessarily not mythic, but Hellbent Raider is an uncommon that snuck into rare. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm reading this going, why is this here? Oh, this must be one that was printed at rare. No, it says rare on the card. What the hell is this? Eh, <laughs> but... That's for strike and haste and can protect itself. Yeah. yeah all right. I can, and I, I see uh... why they would have done that. It, it's flavor text is a little maybe I'm just getting old and like prudish but I'm like it's kind of hardcore he doesn't slow until the spear is weighted with corpses okay I mean to be then, fair that's when I slow too yeah but then I also look at the art and I'm like that guy sure <laughs> okay so I mean, just it looks because, like you can fit like, yeah, go ahead. For one red, red, it's a two-two with first strike and haste, and you can discard a card at random from your hand to give it protection from white until end of turn. Would it really have been that difficult to just let it be, just regular discard a card to enable your madness? Yeah, I mean, devastating dreams is also at random, so yeah, I don't... red's discard. 
most of Red's discard here was random. That it differentiated itself that way from the other colors. I guess. Yeah, but I making it way, it... way worse. Good job, Red. I, I mean, <laughs> with devastating dreams, I could see you just being like everything in my hand. It doesn't matter. Like, but with this, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well. Have we spent enough time on red to be like Grim Lava Mancer? Probably. Like Chad brought up Radiate, and it, just for the confusion factor, and I don't think so because again, it's a red rare. So red rares are, are just by and large bad and confusing. confusing. Yeah. So Radiate, real quick. Let me check the Oracle text to see if that's different. Better. Yeah, you better. It is not. <laughs> so Radiate for three red red is an instant that says. You know what? I don't care what it says. What it does is it targets a copy, uh, it targets a spell that only has one target, an instant or sorcery. And then it makes copies that targets everything that it could target. So if it's a lightning bolt and you radiate a lightning bolt, then you you deal three damage to everything that it could conceivably target. Permanent or player. Yeah, so it's, it's just everything. Hey, that means it can hit planeswalkers now. If you radiate a lightning oh, bolt. Right. That's cool. So I love me Ink Trader Nephilim. I've had a deck built around Ink Trader Nephilim and Polymorph for forever. And I don't use Radiate. It's not yeah. because I don't have any. But like for yeah, I think we've all got like six of these. But like for for five mana, it, it's a cool-sounding uh, idea, but you never get to use it. Yeah. And it, when either... it, you do, it's like, oh, I dealt three to everything, or oh, I bounced all the creatures, or oh, uh, I I boomer, I, I radiated a boomerang, and now everybody hates me, because we do. Yeah. I'm telling you, polymorph is where it's at. But then if you're... You are using this one of two ways. You are waiting for someone to play a spell that meets this definition. So you're holding five mana up probably for too long because you're wait because somebody's gonna be like, Alright, I'm casting this spell and you're like, Okay, does it have a single target? No. Or oh, does it have a single target? Yes. But is it dumb for me to copy? Yeah, probably. Or you are being proactive about it, in which case you are adding five to the cost of your instant or sorcery. Five is not a small number. With polymorph, that means you have to have nine mana available. I'm not. I, I realize I keep talking about that because that's what I have done. Mm -hmm. Because to me, hey, that's kind of a cool effect. For a lot of the other stuff that Chewy mentioned, it's basically just like a pseudo wipe. So. I mean Nine mana to polymorph the board does sound reasonable-ish. Yeah. Still, it's a lot. Like, it, the it, first old... The, the first cheap spell in red that popped into my head uh, while while you were talking that might be worth it is, like, Lightning Hex. Like, Helix. Because then oh. you gain a crap load of life and it feels good, man. Yeah. But even so, that's seven mana. Seven... Seven mana, two cards out of your hand to deal three to everything and gain three life for each thing that uh, it hit. That's a lot. I don't know. That sounds pretty appealing to me. Yeah, it is a crap load. But it, you know what, uh, Mike? Go build a radiate deck. Yeah, Mike, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and JT Huffy, thank you for that 35 month resub. Holy crap. Um, you, you could wait for someone to search their library and then cast archive trap and mill everybody including yourself wait does archive trap yeah. says, say opponent i'm gonna look that up i say uh, it might since <laughs> you can do it for free it seems like it might be too good to mill yourself i'm looking hmm so while he looks let's get away from red red as usual is kind of bad Except for Grim Lava Mancer, which is really freaking good. Yeah. And if it's not the mythic, I don't guess Red has one. <laughs> Target opponent puts the top 13 cards into their 
graveyard. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So green? Yeah. Green. There's a ghost. And that's your only option. <laughs> I love Gers Ghost. Damn! <laughs> I also love Gerza Ghost. So, Dirk, what's Gerza Ghost doing? Dirk, Dirk being savage, though. <laughs> right? I mean, there are a bunch that are like, okay, that's that's a really good card. That's a really good solid rare. Not Slash, slash uncommon. Dirk's like, how Looking long do we spend you. on black? I got to go to bed. Gerza Ghost. <laughs> Done. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dirk, why don't you tell us about this Gerza Ghost? So Gerzagos for is for three and two green. It's a beast creature, that's a six eight. So it's it's very big for what it does. Holy or crap! I forgot it that it was a six eight for five. Yeah, back yeah. back in the day too, when like three three for th- for three mana in green was unheard of. So <laughs> until like Champions of Kamigawa. So I don't know if it was, yeah, it was quite so. that bad, but yeah. Well, what it says is, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Gerzagost unless you put two cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Oh no, you're giving me my cards back? What? (laughs) I think the thought is that you can't play this too early. Yeah. But? Uh, But for two green and discarding a card, you may have Gerzagost assign its combat damage this turn as though it wasn't blocked. So, yeah. Thorn elemental. So you can, mm-hmm. it, it's a, a f- activatable thorn elemental for silly cheap. Mm-hmm. That puts a card into your graveyard, which gets you halfway to paying its upkeep cost. Uh, yeah. But, now, like, for so, those of us, like me and Dirk, who love to have our resources, especially, the, we play long ass multiplayer games, we love to have our resources always available and anything that says exile this forever you're like i don't want to like gerzagos is the hotness <laughs> yeah that helped uh, uh, continue the long game yeah. in in the game so one question yeah so the second ability can that only be used once a turn no uh, it doesn't say that so you can just go it like it won't increase the amount of damage that you deal. Well, and that was but... my thing was it says assign its combat damage. So yeah. in my head I'm going, Well you can only do combat once unless otherwise stated, so Yeah, but you and can activate it as many times as you want. So if you really want to get two cards in the graveyard so it'll stick around next turn, yeah, you can pay your four and discard two cards. Yep. Maybe some root walls. I don't understand. I've never understood what the hell's going on in this art. It's a big, uh, weird monster standing in a, a hole. It's it's digging something. It's digging a hole. It's digging the dead bodies that you... I, was, I don't think the, it knows how ground, to dig holes. Like, you, put these back in your deck. They're not dead yet. Like, it's just standing in a hole, and I guess if the other two arms are they're digging, it's not really digging very well, is it? Gerzagos, you're an idiot. <laughs> He looks so happy. He does, though. He looks like he's having a blast. But he's he's a happy idiot. (laughs) A good boy. (laughs) Oh, I get it. He's a big monster version of a dog digging in the backyard. (laughs) And you're like, curses! And he looks up like, ah! And that's when they snapped a picture for the car. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous art but it's lovable. Yeah. And the opponent is like, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm taking six. So, you know. <laughs> and you're like, yes, you are. <laughs> um, so, insist, just like Overmaster, is not a mythic card. Straight up. Yeah. Insist, I think, is way better than Overmaster. Yeah, that's about the same. I was like, I think creatures in green. Oh, it's instance and sorceries in red. Never mind. I th- I think Nantuko Cultivator was reprinted at Uncommon. Wow. I feel like I think so. Yeah. Really? Click. Because I feel like Blight Cutter could have been Nantuko Blight Cutter could have been Uncommon. Oh, beginning. it was yeah. Modern Horizons uh, when it was Uncommon, so that only kind of counts. Yeah, but yeah. 
And then Blight Cutter, you thought might have been reprinted. No, no it's I only. Think, I think Nantico Blight Cutter could have been an uncommon to begin with. Well, I don't know. It's got pro black in torment, so like built You're in right. un- unconditionally. Like if it at threshold, oh, if it got protection for black. Hmm. I can't remember whether they were doing what they were still doing. White Knight at uncommon at the time. So the Blight Cutter, real quick, while they, th- they think about that, for two and a green is a 2-2 two, two insect druid with protection from black. And at threshold, it gets plus one, plus one for each black permanent your opponents control. Ooh! So this is one of those cards that once you hit the seventh card in your graveyard, your opponent goes, <gasps> if they're playing black. Yeah. So, or if you're playing Darkest Hour, yeah. which you should be all the time. All the time. <laughs> and the Cultivator for three and a green is a 2 2 insect druid that says when it enters the battlefield, you may discard any number of land cards, and you get that many plus one plus one counters on Nantuko Cultivator, and you draw that many cards. Which is pretty good, actually. I forgot about the draw cards part until just now. Oh, yeah. draw cards it's part. pretty good. It, do, it does cost four, so it's one of those things where unless... To get any more than, like, two lands in your hand, you've got you've to gotta have something set up at that point. Um, or, or just sandbag lands for a couple turns. Because usually by the time you get to four... If you're playing on curve, you don't have many lands left in your hand. So, this is a car if you play it normally is probably fine. And then late game, if you're top decking, does nothing. Yeah. Um, unless, again, you've been holding on to lands. So, uh, the green dream card, which has a word in it that I can never pronounce correctly, ever. Just, I, nostalgic? I'm, my brain... Yeah. Yep. Interesting. I just my brain doesn't work that way. <laughs> so this is the one that Dirk thought was how the blue one worked. Well, sorta. Of. Actually, it might be. Yeah. Because it's, it's not what you were. It's returning X cards from your graveyard, hand, to, your graveyard you know? to your hand. Yeah. Which is not yeah. bad, but again, that's pretty good. But yeah, it's not mythic good. But it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Granted, so, you had to discard X cards to do that, so you're actually down one card. But still, it's card selection then, rather than card, yeah. you know, quantity. And then, and then skipping ahead just to the end, possessed centaur, like the other possessed creatures, is fine. It's, it's just fine. not mythic. Yeah. The other one that I thought, along with Gerzagost, might be, is Parallel oh. Evolution. Sorry about that. And Chewy Drop things. So, but parallel evolution might get there for three. It would be the next closest for me. Mm-hmm. For three and two green, to sorcery and oracle. Yeah, let's get that up. Oh, okay. it's basically so, the same. For three and two green, a sorcery. Yep. Yeah. For each creature token on the battlefield, its controller creates a token that's a copy of that creature. And that's interesting to me that, again, like a lot of the stuff back then, it was 100% symmetrical. It was not just yours. It was everybody's. Um, But, and that has flashback of four and three green. So the initial one is five mana. And then to flash this back is only two more mana for seven. That's actually not a not a huge jump. Um. And the fact that it doesn't care about how those tokens are generated, what the size of those tokens are, and this is, you know, still an Odyssey block where Odyssey itself gave us, you know, Roar of the Worm and um, uh, what's the elephant one? Call uh, of the Herd. Call of the Herd, yeah. And this doesn't say, hey, for each type, again, of token, it's just however many tokens you have, you now have twice as many. I kind of do. I think this is mythic. Like if it was printed today, probably not. 
it's like a pseudo sort of like after the fact kind of doubling season. Well, no, doubling season does stupid doubling season throwing me off. It doesn't do tokens. It does counters. Um, but sorry, doubling season always messes me up. But I think at the time, maybe for five mana, you can get a uh, heck... does both. It does both, doesn't it? Doubling yeah, season was, like, was dumb. What? The, the longer season was the, dumb. <laughs> The, the longer we get from when it was printed in original Ravnica, the more it's like, yeah, that shouldn't do that for five mana. Like, yeah, that's at why all. they're apparently like $70 now. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mark Rosewater. <laughs> uh, but so, could this be Mythic? I, I, I think there's a case to be made for it. I think Gerzagos is probably the more straightforward choice. But um, I think there's a case to be made for this. And for five mana, this can give you a stupid amount of power. It might help somebody else, too. Yeah. As I remember, uh, I don't remember if you mentioned the Corey's squirrel deck. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Honest uh, reaction to Cory Squirrel Deck. Yeah. Hmm. So, like with lots of these older sets, there are a couple of obvious choices, and the rest are like, uh, no. Yeah. Uh, At least there were some obvious choices in this set. Thank God. Yeah. There, there were some obvious choices. And if they set out to make Black the star of the show in this set, they, from from the perspective of what we just talked about today, they absolutely succeeded. Yeah, like just yes. looking at the rares, 100% Black was by far the best. Yeah, like not even close. So, yeah. Some in interesting stuff in white... Uh, some middling stuff in green and then blue and red were like blue, but black was far and away the standout which if that is since that's what they were going for mission accomplished yeah yeah so, so next time no, sorry go ahead uh, so that was torment uh yep. do let us know somewhere the discord or the comments or the email whatever uh how uh what what you thought that we screwed up because i know someone would be like oh my god they didn't like what about me i'm like i don't I'm, we mentioned damn near every card so i don't know what that could overmaster. be overmaster yeah we did not totally mention overmaster egg. until we got to green yeah but that's, that's not <laughs> that's not mythic i don't care what you say uh <laughs> hashtag totally mythic but uh, yeah, let us know what we did wrong or what you think. Like, is there something in white that you're like, why is this not me? They go, I don't know. Just didn't seem like it to us. Yeah. Yeah. But and then the, the next time we do one of these, a discussion. it'll be judgment where it'll be more green and white and less black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to that one. So not sure when we'll get to yeah, that. There was we'll, good we'll stuff. There's going to be multicolored cards too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was good stuff in Judgment, so that should be a good uh, a good set to do this oh, yeah. for. Well, yeah, let's just go and do that. Dirk, you can stay up for another three hours, right? No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Dirk isn't even, even going to play along for a second. Like, nope. Nah. Oh. <laughs> I guess Dirk's not going to hang out and do the, the end of everything. Thanks, buddy. No, I was cheery and chipper and energetic at the beginning, but I have quickly lost steam. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I hope you can still play all your games. Wah, wah. <laughs> oh, I am a smart person. So. Only if they're reindeer. What? Games. <laughs> reindeer now, games. Now I, I hate Dirk. Uh, <laughs> Tis the season to be something. Hating Dirk. So, how about some uh, final thoughts then, my dorks? 
Um, I, so Trevor and I uh, try and see in the mornings. We get up about five o'clock and go for a walk in the mornings, just so Ooh. I need the exercise, he needs the exercise. And lo and behold, this morning we got to see a shooting star. Hey, a very bright one. So he got to see it and everything. We it was like, hey, did you see that? He's like, yeah. So he was excited about that. And then the only other thing. Uh, in my final thoughts is um, I thought it was funny when Brian asked the question of what plane Strixhaven is on because that plane is Arcavius. And I know that because I just acquired the D&D book on Strixhaven. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I had heard that they were coming out with that. So uh, that is my next reading material. To be looking through and everything. Uh, based on what I can see, there is only one uh, creature class that's in the book, and that's the owl people. Okay. But it looks really cool because there's a curriculum for the different years you're there. Ah. It's like, hey, you're there for this many years. Here are the things you can do during year one. But can you apply for internships that will actually land you in the field of your choice upon your graduation? Or will you be forced? I only did the first, uh, like first couple uh, years. It's like, Oh, and you completed year one. Oh, okay. And then, uh, so I know I can't answer that question yet. I'm sorry. See, you'll have to let me know if you're buried in years and years of unpayable debt by the time you get to the end. (laughs) man oh now i'm sad and like okay just as a quick uh tangent like when we went to school college was expensive that was nothing <laughs> compared to like what college is now i told the old man oh god this had to be like 10 years ago or so i was like you wouldn't even recognize the tuition from uh college now you would think that this was a typo <laughs> yeah any commas it, yeah he'd be like they added a couple extra zeros on it this is stupid <laughs> yeah because it's not only the inflation effect but also there's uh, less subsidizing by the federal government and also you know it's yet another giant scam Yes. To an extent. To an extent. But anyway. And that was a long time ago. I don't even want to think about it now. Jesus. It's Dirk's fault. Damn it, Dirk. It is. So just typing it in, just for UNCG, it is $16,829 in state. In state. Is that for a year or a semester? That's a semester. <laughs> Wow. Because t- in here in the type line, UNCG cost per semester, uh, per per semester, and that's what it says. Did you say 16,000? 16,800. Oh my god. That was like two years for me. <laughs> so it says here, the and ask, uh, people also ask the current established rates and it's full to fees and living expenses for a four year bachelor degree. UNCG is. 80,000 for uh, students graduating in normal time. This oh, is God. this is approaching not there. This is approaching what I paid for law school at a private school. <laughs> <laughs> so, less depressing final thoughts. Dirk saw a shooting star. That's right. Yay. I'm going to read about Strixhaven. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Nice. Um, so, and with that, I'm going to go to bed because I got to go up at five o'clock. All right. And, and that's Let's in like 25 minutes. So, good night, Dirk. <laughs> good night, guys. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to make that so dark. I was just trying to have a little bit of fun with it, and before I knew it, it you know was out of control. Uh, for my final thought, um, I made everybody feel old by reminding them that. Uh, my niece, who was a, who was the flower girl at my wedding, 
And I was married, of course. The year we started the podcast is going to be 16 years old in a couple of weeks before the end of the year. Yeah. And my reaction to that was an emphatic, what? And then Dirk's reaction was, what? <laughs> and Followed Mike's by was just like stunned a, silence. Yeah. <laughs> Chewie said what a not uh, Dirk said what a couple times. So <laughs> we're all getting old, but Say what otherwise <laughs> Yes, Nick Fury, I will. Uh. Um but uh no, otherwise everything I okay, everything is going okay. I do feel like work has been more stressful and more draining. But we are coming up on the end of the year, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll have some time to like rest and recharge, and hopefully not put off everything to deal with in the new year. Because sometimes that happens. But no, I'm good. Um, Damn it, Mike! <laughs> I feel like there was something I was gonna say. I was trying to and figure it's, it's out gone. how to say say what one and and say it in such a way that I could not have to bleep it for the show, which <laughs> led my brain straight into I'm tired of these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel like I should make a Capital One joke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how come he's not... What's in your Monday to Friday? Well, <laughs> personally, I think Capital One would probably make more sales if they let him swear in the commercials. <laughs> oh, my God. So, is there anything else there, Brian? I felt like there was something else, but I don't remember. I'm tired. I'm sticking around until the end of the final thoughts. Unless you take too long. <laughs> okay, good night. <laughs> so, Mike. <laughs> um, sure now I'm just thinking about television commercials that Samuel Jackson has been in. Wasn't there one of the Capital One ones where he was like talking to Santa? And Santa brings up the, you know, naughty words, and Sam Jackson's like, uh... I, I think, yeah, that, yeah, I think I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, speaking of Christmas commercials, they're still showing that damn Eminem's commercial. Well, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, hasn't that been running was. since, like, the 70s? <laughs> it's been around a <laughs> long, long time. time. Since we were kids. Well, you got a problem with sweets? M&M's Christmas ad. And the um, Hershey Kisses Carol of the Bells commercial. They're still running that too. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Originally, first commercial. Okay, so it's a two-part ad apparently. Huh? Well, it is now. They added a second one in 2017, so never mind. Oh. Whatever. But the say. first uh, commercial was from 1996. Are you serious? <laughs> yep. Sounds right. I knew it was during my lifetime, but... Like, I knew it had to be old because, like, John Lovitz is the voice of one of the M&Ms, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Although he's not dead, so I don't know why I brought that I was up. Gonna, I was going to say, like, wait, did... I mean, like, I heard about Bob Dole this week, but I wondered if maybe John Lovitz crept in somewhere, and I was going to be sad. No, no, he's still alive. Thank goodness. Yeah. Okay, anyway, sorry. But, like, John Lovitz hasn't done any voice work in freaking forever, except for this M&M's commercial, which I hope he's getting fat checks for every year. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> Sorry, I walked all over your final thoughts, Mike, because you brought up Christmas ads, and that popped into my head. Uh, um, I saw it when I went to see the parents on television still, and I was like, what? Now I'm 
I'm curious about. Oh, here we go. Okay, the Hershey Kisses Carol the Bells commercial was is from 1989. Oh my god. Gosh. It debuted in December 1989 and is shown in the United States each holiday season. As such, it is the longest-running television commercial for the Hershey brand. For in the 2012, Hershey? the ad was redone with a new recording of the audio and the graphics being redone entirely in CGI. Since then, that version has been the one playing each year. Really? I thought it sounded I thought it, it sounded a little better than some there was a certain point where I'm like, that sounds pretty good for something that old. Maybe they redid the sound. Huh. Wait, it says the, the longest running commercial for uh, the Hershey brand. I wonder if there's just another commercial period that's been running since before 1989. There can't be. Yeah, the way that's worded implies that, doesn't it? Huh. Now I'm curious again, the longest <laughs> television commercial. We're, we're doing it live, folks. Because this, this is genuinely okay. something I want to know. <laughs> Bringing you the news you didn't know you needed to know, because no. Okay, 1975, the world's longest running TV commercial. Okay, this is from the GuinnessWorldRecords.com. The world's longest running TV commercial is the Discount Tire Company's Thank You commercial. Produced by Swartwoot Productions in Arizona, USA, and first aired in 1975. The same commercial has been aired continuously every year in parts of the USA. Wow. I wonder what that looks like. There are no rhetorical questions anymore. You know this. Oh, here's uh, a thing called the five longest running commercials. Okay, the M&M's from 1996. The Campbell Snowman from 1993. Oh, I know. Yep. Was that the one where the kid, like, you know, melts? Yeah, the snowman walks in. Yeah. Uh, and eats soup and melts into a kid. Yeah. The Corona yeah. Christmas with the lights on the palm trees. Hmm. I haven't yep. seen that one. No? Really? That's been going since I 1990. Like, I, feel like I, have. I feel like I personally haven't seen it in a while. Mike, you need to watch more beer commercials. All right. The I've Fallen yeah, and I Can't Get Up Lady from 1989. Although I don't think that one's oh, still running. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Wait, the... Say that again. I couldn't hear it. Uh, the Fallen I fallen and I Can't Get Up Lady for, what is it, Life, life Alert? It is oh, Life, life, life okay. Alert, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've fallen and I can't get up. And then, of course, from 1970, the Tootsie Pop Owl. Oh. Mr. Owl. How many licks does it... Yeah, that one. Wow. Are they still showing that? They might be. I haven't seen it in forever, but that doesn't mean it's not still there. But this is, like, national stuff. Like the what you got was regional, I think, because I don't know if I've ever seen that ad. So it has a so it says this is the one where so the commercial involves an old lady throwing an unwanted tire into the glass window of discount tires while the voiceover yep. suggests that if a customer is not happy with their tires, then please return them. Jesus, <laughs> no, I know that one, it's really kind of abrupt. It's funny which ones stick around with you. Or which ones they they keep doing because they don't always make okay, sense. The old like, lady's oh, why would got you show a hat, it? and she's she, she chucks it through the window. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I advertising one hundred and one. I don't recognize that at all, but Brian does. Neat. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've seen it too. After reading that description, I know exactly what it is. Oh. I can see it in my head. Like I'm watching it, and I don't remember ever seeing this. So it's like it's like mm. Mike in the Corona Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So chat, let oh, us know Rona. what you think, or not chat, the listeners, chat too if you're still here. <laughs> anyway, so Mike, final thought. <laughs> um. 
I think I've done enough here. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let me run through the lifeguards here on patreon.com slash the mana pool, where you too can go if you want to support the show and the YouTube channel and the upcoming The Deep End channel. Uh, Cheyenne sent me the storyboards for each uh, for, for the video or the, the quick little intro video, and I'm very excited. And I know she's been working on it some today because she sent me an email asking something. So, nice. But you can get early the videos and, and uh, a podcast early. You can get the odds and ends. You can get the, the sponsorship shout out. Hey, like this. So thank you too. <gasps> Violet Moon, Team Uhelis, are you? Stan, Scuzzo, PJ McMullen, Gothic Man, Mr. Dr. Lewis, Beardy Man, <laughs> Kim Ho, Casey, John Parker, Jason Kaus, Jason Doan, Jake Jansons, Connor Kennedy, Cody Buckowing, and who got to itch? Andrew Hunt, ALK Alters, Al, and the Beast Father, Aaron Goodwine. I did that in one breath. So, nicely done. As for my final thought, um, hmm, I got nothing actually. I spent all day, like I said, helping Scott movie heavy stuff. So um, my brain is mush. Plus, I just spent way too long looking up old commercials. <laughs> too much time or just enough? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm reading The Dresden Files because Mom finally gave up and bought the last three that we didn't have at a bookstore instead of at a used bookstore where we got all the others. You know, we had the, the challenge factor for trying to find them. But there were three we didn't have, and she said, you know what, I'm going to buy them. So she did. So now we have the entire Dresden Files run including the new one that just came out in paperback like about a week before she decided to buy them. So that's cool. And I'm on book uh, one, two, three, four, so five, which is Death Masks. And it's the last one that I've read before. Although I have zero memory of anything that's happened thus far other than a few little bits of vague, oh, I remember this guy. I don't know why I have no memory of it, but yeah. So that's cool. And after I finish Death Mass, I'll get to read Blood Rites, which is the first one I haven't read because I couldn't find it anywhere for free because the first time I started reading these back when I was super, super broke. And I was getting them from the library system. And they only had Blood Rites in audiobook, and I don't do audiobooks. So I stopped there, and I'm very sad. But now we have them all. And mom is still working on my Sandman books. She's like, ooh, ooh, let me read the Sandman again before the show comes out. I went, okay. And she made it through books one, two, three, and halfway through four. And then it got cold. And usually mom reads sitting out on the porch. And now it's cold. Mm. So she has stalled halfway through book four. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it, mom. You, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that the first season of the show is not going to go past book one, maybe some bits of book two. And she went. You should remind her that she has chairs inside. But yeah, yeah, but if she's in the house, then the old man's got the TV up, or they're playing with a puzzle. So I, I get it. I'm not making fun. Just I mean, you should. They're but, they're good to make fun of. But <laughs> what were you gonna say? You were gonna remind them of something else? Oh yeah, I told her. I, I'm pretty sure the season, the 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 first season of the show, won't get past all that. So she's she's probably fine with what she's read. But yeah, it's just weird. I've got this giant hole in my uh, bookshelf behind me because that's where the Sandman books go. And mom's got seven of them. <laughs> and other than that, uh, you know what? I'll stop there. I have been watching the lockpicking lawyer on uh, YouTube. And he, he is fascinating and very like relaxing. Because you know, he's got a very even tone like he never gets too too super excited you know and he's just very relaxing and then when he starts to picking he's like all right nothing on one little click out of two three is binding and it's just very like it's like watching bob ross paint it's just like ah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's, it's really fascinating even though i know nothing about picking locks and don't care to know doesn't matter 
So thank you, Clues. Clues told me a long time ago, you should watch a lockpicking lawyer. And I like watched one video and went, yeah, right. So he, he literally picks locks. I didn't know if this was, that was just like the name of the show or something. Oh no. Yeah. He's, he's one of the, what's it called? A hand channel where all you see is his hands. And hmm. yeah, he, he acquires locks and shows you how to pick them or how to bypass them or how to, uh, like, potential problems so you'll know like which ones you should and shouldn't buy if you're actually want to keep something safe uh here's a quick spoiler don't ever buy anything master lock ever there you go well dang yeah yeah like master locks especially the ones that you can just go to like a place and buy easily you don't even need to pick those you could just bypass it and just open them it's it's kind of awful But anyway, so yeah, that's that's one of the things I've been doing. <gasps> I also finished, uh, I rewatched the first part and then watched the second part of Masters of the Universe Revelation. And oh, oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. Mike. Brian. Yeah. It's so good. I've been wanting to watch it since it's all available now. I haven't seen any of it yet, so... I guess I'll get on that. Like, as someone who grew up as a He-Man kid, like, literally every episode had me in tears at least once. Because, like, I've known these characters literally my entire life. And, like, I have... Because I've known them for so long, like, I've got such a deep appreciation and love for them. And watching a show made, like, last year made by someone else who clearly cares about these characters just as much as I do. Oh, Oh, it's so good. Like, I think I still have most of my He-Man stuff up in the closet over there. Like, seriously. <laughs> Get them out and play with them. Yeah! <laughs> but anyway, anyway. So that's part of what I've been up to lately. Also, uh, the Deep End videos are coming. I'm, I'm about halfway through getting the script for the Zelda one written. I still have to play more beat-em-ups for the second video, so that'll be the second one. And once I get a, f a few under my belt and, you know, get a feel for editing and whatnot, I'll start on the MCU videos, which is the whole reason I was going to start the, the deep end in the first place. So, yeah. It's good that you've you've been inspired in other ways, too. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm very excited. And like I said, I just need to good. get the logo done and Cheyenne's working on the intro animation. And then I can make the once I get the logo done, I can make the, the second part of the animation. For the, the just the deep in videos, and yeah, I'm very excited. Sick. So with that, we'll be done. So this has been the mana pool number six hundred thirty nine. I think I said that at the beginning. If not, I've said it just now. Uh, thank you all so very much for joining us. And uh, what's what's mythic in torment for you?